The biggest race of the evening, the mayor's race here, is a look at the numbers. Right now, they have been close all night between Paul Dallas and Brandon Johnson. Brandon Johnson ultimately the winner with 51% of the vote. All right, let's turn to our panel for this evening with their final thoughts. Morgan, let's begin with you. Well, first, since my friend here brought up crime, I just want to say that Forbes, <laughs> <laughs> Forbes published an article in January of this year of the most violent cities. Chicago is not even in the top 15. We're not the violence capital of America. We are the violence narrative capital of America. And somehow black Chicago has become the face of violent crime. And for those of us who are dedicated to reshaping the narrative, we're saying enough with that narrative. We are a community of vibrant people who are very interested in keeping our people safe. I think the vast majority of Chicagoans are open to those strategies and learning more about them. And I hope they listen to the young people who are forging that path. We, we saw a first step with that, with the election of Brandon Johnson. Okay, Morgan, thank you. Paul, well, look, I think it's a new day for the city of Chicago. We didn't know what direction we were gonna go. We now know we're gonna go in the direction of progressivism. We'll see how Brandon Johnson negotiates that road with the members of city council, the cabinet he builds around him, the appointments he makes. But a quick shout out to Naperville, which we covered, because that was one in which the polls were suggesting that the more liberal uh, Benny White, who had the support of Sean Castellor and Underwood, Tammy Duckworth, you don't typically get that in a Naperville right. race. But Naperville is blue, or it seems to be, not tonight, as it goes to, looks like it's going to Scott Worley. It just goes to show you can't draw any conclusions. Yeah. The place is going blue, sometimes turn a little bit red and go back and forth. Pat Brady, what's the national headline tomorrow on this race? Well, we've already seen it up there on the on the prompter. It would be, yeah, that the, the, the teachers union, the union uh, won big in Chicago and they're going to be empowered. But uh, listen, congratulations. They, they delivered. Uh, they delivered the vote. Their candidate delivered, gave a great speech there. Um, and so congratulations to them. It, it, We'll see what they can do with their agenda, but that's all you can do tonight. Like tonight, I say, hey, you guys, you know what? You won. You did a great job, and let's all let's all work together. All right, Lisa Duarte, and then Taman, you will bring us home. It's about getting to work. You know, Lori Lightfoot came in. She was ahead of landslide. She wasn't really able to get anything done because she didn't know how to work with people. <clears throat> Brandon's coming in with a smaller margin, and he needs to do the same thing. We cannot sit around and wait to learn on new politicians' dimes. Um, you know, let them learn on the job. Mm -hmm. He's got a little bit of experience, but it's really going to be what can he do to coalition build and execute on his agenda. We need to be trying out new solutions, seeing if they work. If so, move forward. If not, toss them out. But that's what we need to get done Can't now. figure that out quickly, right? In the late 1990s, the establishment directed Paul Vallis to come up with the metrics to determine when schools were failing. Uh, about a decade later, 50 failing schools were closed. It sparked a movement. Uh, people said, do not take away our resources. Don't take our neighboring schools, forcing kids to travel farther to go to schools, increasing violence because kids dropped out of schools. Uh, fast forward 10 more years, that movement that was birthed, a direct line from uh, Paul Vallis and Mayor Daley's policies of the late 1990s, fast forward to where we are today, that movement took the fifth floor of City Hall. Okay. Appreciate the perspectives, everybody. Appreciate you watching tonight as we covered the city's runoff election. All right, a lot of great perspective tonight. Brandon Johnson has defeated Paul Vallis and will become the city's next mayor of Chicago. Johnson's margin of victory is about 16,000 votes this evening with 99% of the vote right now. Both Johnson and Vallis addressing supporters just a short time ago. Listen in. To the Chicagoans who did not vote for me, Here's what uh -huh. I want you to know. Here's what I want you to know. That I care about you. I value you. And I want to hear from you. I want to work with you. And I'll be the mayor for you too. It's time for all Chicagoans to put aside their differences and to walk and to work together supporting the daunting work ahead for our next mayor. I am optimistic that better, brighter days are on the horizon. Yes. All right, that's the Chicago mayor's race. And there you see the numbers as we look at some of the other big races we covered for you tonight. 11th Ward Alderman Nicole Lee won a full term, defeating challenger Anthony Cherovino. Also in the city's 43rd Ward on the north side, incumbent Alderman Timmy Knudsen defeated challenger Brian Comer.
And another incumbent victory in the city council tonight, Alderman Jim Gardner. He beat challenger Megan Mathias in the 45th Ward on the city's northwest Let's side. Let's go to the 46th Ward. Angela Clay defeated Kim Walls. Clay will hold the seat previously held by Alderman James Kappelman, who retired after three terms in the city council. And in the suburbs, city of Naperville voting for a new mayor for the first time in eight years. Scott Worley leading the vote count right now over Benny White. You can see more of tonight's results at our website, WGNTV.com. And our coverage of all the city and suburban races continues throughout all of our newscasts. And we thank you and thank all the candidates, all the older people and panelists for joining us for our coverage tonight. I'm Lourdes Duarte. And I'm Ray Cortapassi.